Australia. Hey, Billy, you dandelion pussy. <laughs> Why aren't you coming to Australia? Run out of stupid jokes about us? Or did you find your way into an Outback Steakhouse and add a Foster's and thought you got the point, you dumb American? Come make me laugh. Um, can I be honest with you? Fucking rejects from the English Empire. Fellow rejects. Uh, well, you guys were just like animals that, that they couldn't control that were like a bunch of criminals. And then they sent you to that lifeless island. You call it country. You can't even live in like, you know, your breadbasket is like unlivable. Um, that's the ACDC song, Highway to Hell. I always thought Highway to Hell was them making fun of Zeppelin saying Stairway to Heaven. Stairway to Heaven, Highway to Hell. Highway to Hell was them driving through the middle part of their country trying to get to a gig. Um, but anyway, yeah, nobody drinks Foster's. I've never seen it. Um, you would think in a country of obese people, we would enjoy how big the can is and all of that, but it's just, we know what it is. It's, you guys make unbelievably delicious beer and you keep it for yourselves like little creatures. I can't get that here. But your swill, you basically put it in a can the size of like a fucking PT boat's like depth charge and you send it over here like right you eat it right um i haven't been over there because i have kids and i just i mean i just haven't been able to fucking figure it out i am going to get over there and what's going to suck is i have to do you know what i should tour it in the summertime which is your winter time because then i can bring everybody over there i just have to wait till my kids get a little bit older and then i can take everybody over there because i don't want to go over there because as much as I'm making fun of your country, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful place. And you guys know, if you've listened to this podcast, I am fucking terrified of the ocean. And I have a buddy of mine that's over there right now who's saying how he, Sydney's his favorite city in the world. And he was talking about the beaches. And I have to be honest with you, as terrified as I am of the ocean, of sharks, of the undertow, of hypothermia, of being pulled out to sea and just dying alone, and being out there on a moonless night and not being able to see my hand in front of my face and then feel something touch my fucking leg, as much as all of that goes through my head, the beaches of Australia are so fucking gorgeous. Like I had to stop myself from going into the water during the winter time when it was cold. I felt compelled to go into it. It was so fucking beautiful. I don't know why, I have no idea why. It's the most, okay, Australia, the most beautiful beaches in the world, the most beautiful sea in the world is the Mediterranean, okay? As far as my limited travel, that's what I feel. So when I go to Australia, I don't want to fucking go there and just barnstorm it and start off in Perth and then just work my way back to fucking Sydney. And right as I get acclimated to the time, I get on the fucking plane and do 14 hours back. I don't want to do that. I, I like to go there and enjoy Australia because it's a fucking amazing country. The people are fucking hilarious. And uh, last time I was there, I want to say I went to the, um, the Australian Open, the tennis event. But I'd like to go there and like stay there like 10 days and tour at a comfortable pace. And then maybe go to like Australian Rules Football, like actually experience the fucking country rather than just coming into Melbourne and just checking into the hotel and then you know, doing the gig and then fucking coming back. I don't want to do that. I, I, so that's why I am waiting. I'm going to come down there. All right. I've been there like four times and I will tell you one thing I've never seen. I've never seen anybody drinking a fucking Foster's ever. Never seen it. And as far as Outback Steakhouse, how dare you? How fucking dare you suggest that I would ever get a steak in a shithole like that. I Listen, I'm not going to lie to you. Outback Steakhouse is a place I would have gone to back in the day when I was working in a warehouse and I was fucking broke, living week to week. But, you know, once you make a little bit of money, okay, a steak, you just don't go out to get a steak. You save your money up and you go to a place that's going to make it right. All right? And it's not a place that also serves a blooming onion, whatever the fuck that is. Although I, I've never had a blooming onion. It does look delicious. Um, as far as like, where the fuck was my steak place? 
steak was just never fast food when I was growing up. We didn't have Outback Steakhouse. We didn't have Steak and Shake. We didn't have that. And there also wasn't a bunch of steak. You know what? Your mom made steak. And then she put it on the table. And your dad was like, Christ, you cooked the shit out of it. (laughs) My dad, like, he fucking, the way he liked steak, it literally, it was still almost cold on the inside. Anything else, it was like, Christ, you cooked the shit out of it. Dude, male, female, the shit you could get away with as a guy back then. Oh, my God. If my, the lovely Nia ever made me a a, a fucking meal and I just whined that she cooked the shit out of it, I would even finish the statement before the fucking meal would be over my head. And then I would be like, yeah, I deserved it. Like, what kind of an asshole? (laughs) You cooked the shit out of it. Um. Anyway, but then my dad like undercooked everything. Oh my God, just undercooked everything. Eggs, runny as fucking hell. The worst is when he made fucking, you know, poached eggs on toast. The toast would just be warm bread and then he would fucking take the poached eggs out of the skillet. Was not using, you're not using a slotted spoon because that was a luxury. So he'd put the runny egg with whatever water was on the spoon onto this wet, warm bread. (laughs) Oh, my God. It was like, I don't even know. I'm just immediately thinking of, like, taking a steam. Uh, That's the level of water that was in it. All right. Explaining the Angry Sportsman podcast to my kid. Oh, no. Dearest Frederick Freckles, I've listened to your podcast for years in Australia. This is another Australian one. All right. Fuck it. I'm going over there. I'm going to make it happen. Usually while I'm cooking my family, well, usually I'm cooking my family some dinner and my kids... Oh, my God. Okay, so there's going to be no periods in this. All right, I'll do the punctuation here. Let me read slower. I've listened to your podcast for years in Australia. Usually while I'm cooking. Usually while I'm cooking, period. No, usually while I'm cooking my family some dinner. Period. I'm going to get rid of this and and just say, my kids have often asked why I listen to this angry, swearing American (laughs) talking slash screaming about sports. U.S. sports, no less. Something literally none of us care about whatsoever. Dude, that was my favorite thing about Jokic winning the, you know, his whole after, like, winning the championship and him just clearly showing that basketball is just a job and that he really just wants to be back in his home country with his friends, hanging out with his horses, like, which totally makes sense. If you, if you can just get yourself out of like, why don't you think everything's awesome in our country? It's like, because he's not from here. And all of his memories and his friends and all of that stuff and the, pay, the pace of life and the food and all of that is back where he's from. I thought it was beautiful. He was just like, you know, oh, you know you're like, oh, you won the championship. How are you feeling? Oh, you know, it's great. It's great. Now we can all go home. <laughs> And when he found out, oh, the poor bastard, when he found out there was a championship parade like three days later, he literally looked to the left like, well, I got to do something else? What the fuck? Oh, God. Does anybody have video of him on that fucking duck boat or whatever you take him around in, the, the, the giant rubber raft with wheels on it in um, slash assault vehicle in Denver? I would love to see footage of that. I bet he got off that thing and just went straight to the airport. And I hope he got home as soon as possible. And that, like, uh, just the way you could just see how much he missed his country and his friends and his horses and all of that. And I just was looking at that, like, going, oh, my God. Like, when he looked over there, if I was the owner of the team, I'd be like, hey, man, you know what? You don't have to go. You don't have to go to the parade. Just get, get out of here. Go home. You know? You won the championship. People aren't going to give a fuck that you didn't go to the parade. I mean, some will, but that's just because they're not happy with their own lives. Um, anyway, so they asked, they're asking this, this guy, this father. Oh my God, I got to get eat something. And he, my stomach fucking growling here. Why he's listening to me. He said, I didn't have a good answer for them. 
but I have always enjoyed the maniacal passion and humor, even when you're yelling about something I have no idea about. Well, I appreciate that because I have to be honest with you. I can, I've watched clips of women yelling about shit to their guys in a language I don't even know one word of. I don't even know how to say hello. And I can basically, like, I kind of understand what's going on. And I can tell by his expression whether she's a nag or whether he really fucked up. And I can tell by her tone how close they, if this, if this is the end of the relationship or if this is just like a moment. Um, so that's cool that you can do that with my, I can't even, I'm not even good at speaking my own language. So the fact that you can fucking figure that out is amazing. Um, so the guy goes on to say, we all have our interests and you're passionately interested in things like drums, music, choppers, etc. I think that's a good way to be. I'm in a family of music and art nerds and we're all inspired and passionate in the things we do too. However, oh, I, I taught my daughter her first drum beat. And I'm taking my son to uh, music class today. Uh, I'm very excited. I'm just sort of nudging him in that direction. And if they take to it, then we're all going to fucking jam. And I'll become the white Joe Jackson and ruin their childhoods. Kidding. Um, no, if, if they're into it, they're into it. If they're not, then I'll just back off. So anyway, the guy continues. He says, however, if the kid wants to skip sports at school, I couldn't give a fuck. What does that have to do? I'm in a family music art nerds and we're all inspired and passionate in the things we do too. However, if the kids want to skip sports at school, I couldn't give a fuck. Well, that's fine. He goes, I'd rather they sat on the sidelines with a fake medical certificate I wrote clutching an asthma inhaler than risk injury or endure the pointless exercise of chasing a ball. <laughs> Oh my God. I gotta be honest with you, dude. That has got to be one of the best criticisms of sports I've ever heard. Simply because you've actually shown that you're a passionate person and you're into something else. And here's the thing, you know, there's a lot of people that don't like sports, but everybody likes music. You know what I mean? Everybody, there's a song that just gets you going. I would think, I'm sure there's a couple of exceptions, but generally speaking, and you're into music. So, oh, the pointless exercise of chasing a ball. Oh my God, that's fucking amazing. I always, I love people that aren't into sports because I always want to be like, well, so what do you do with all your free time? Um, I'm, I'm literally addicted to it. Like I actually have to go through a couple days of like, oh my God, hockey and basketball are over. What am I going to do? And then I get into baseball and I just, I have to get totally into baseball because if I don't, then like, what am I going to do with myself? Um, all right, so the person says, I've never cared for sports myself and I've been relatively successful in life. Dude, you're cooking for your kids and you're into music and if they don't want to play sports, you're okay with that? Um, you're an amazing human being and I think you're a great father from what I'm reading here. Um, anyway, uh, he says, I've given them full permission to suck at sports and care less. In recent years, however, I've gotten into chess big time, playing it, watching it, following the great players. All right. Well, chess is not a sport. All right. Let's get, oh my God, that reminds me of something I got to tell you guys about. Chess has exploded recently online. Do you know the world, who the world's top chess player is right now? Can you name him? Uh, no, I can't, but I watched a story recently and it's probably some guy sitting in a park. Um but they're just not good at being in the matrix. This person says, maybe not, but the goat is a guy called Magnus Carlsen from Norway who's been blowing everyone away for about a decade or more. Uh, I 100% can appreciate that. I think that's, uh, I think chess and chess players are actually fascinating, like that level of intelligence. Um. Oh, uh, and, and like, but my problem is watching chess is like so fucking annoying because it's either played over the course of three days or it's played so goddamn fast. Like I, I you know, I, it's like at Eddie Van Halen speed and there's just, just nothing for me to do because Eddie, I'm, I'm enjoying the sound he's making. And when I'm watching chess players playing as fast as Eddie uh, I, I, I don't know what's going on. So it's just the sound of the fucking piece 
hitting the board and then them slapping the clock. And I'm like, okay, you guys, you guys play real fast. I don't know what the point of this is. Um, all right. The way the young players play now eclipses the last generation since they all came up with computers. Oh, so they had to be good enough to be computers. Oh my God. This gives me an idea for a movie. AI's out of control. And then the, the only way to, to, to feed it is they have to bring in a chess, an antisocial chess champion. <laughs> 